Let's make this knitted Christmas wreath together. First we need to make the three tubes that we plait together. I'm starting with the plain colored one because it's the easiest. I have a set of four small double pointed needles and one ball of yarn. This is about double knitting weight. It's wool, but you can of course use any kind of yarn. We start by casting on 21 stitches. Just use any method of casting on, it doesn't make any difference. I use the long tail cast on. So 21. Here's 21 and then you need to divide them on three needles. Seven on that. And seven on that. And then you join them just as if you were starting to knit a sock or something. And uh, I always knit the last one and the first one together so that it stays together. Uh, and that then of course decreases one. So you will be working on 20 stitches. So I moved the last one onto the first needle and then I knit the two of them together. There. Just tighten it a bit. And then you just start knitting round. You may knit in a different way, but that doesn't matter, as long as it <laughs> turns out the same. So you just knit round, 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 until the tube is about one meter long. Uh, with this wool that I have, I actually knit it until the ball of wool was finished, and that was about a meter. So, just keep going and so on, until it's one meter long. It's a big bigger now. There. After you get the red one finished, we can move on to the navy blue one. This is sort of like dark night and snow. <laughs> it has always three stitches in between the white ones, as well as three rows. And the white dots are not in a line, but sort of slight zigzag. I have made a start on the navy blue one. You start exactly the same way as with the red one. Knit round and round on 20 stitches. In the beginning you don't need the pattern in using the other color, because it won't show anyway. It would be under the bow in our wreath. I'll take in another yarn so I have blue and white. So first knit one using the base color, then the next one you take the white one. And then three blue ones. And then again white and blue. So what you do, you have one white one, three blue ones, one white one and so on until the end of the row. So that was one blue, so I need 
two more here and then the white. If you are not well used to color work make sure the yarn at the back doesn't tighten the work so that it stays loose. One, two, three. So now I need a white one and three blue ones. and white and that's the first row done. This here tells me where I started from and then after that you just knit three rounds without using the white so you just leave the white wool here and knit use, using only the blue. and so on until you have three rows here. That's three rounds done. So when I count above the white one, one, two and three. And then I take the white one again. Here you need to tighten it so that it's right, that the stitch is the same size as the others when you take it up again. And then you keep going. But this time now, last time the white one was the second one now it will be the fourth because you want the white one to be in between these two white ones. So now I need one, two, three and then a white one. And now I check that this is in the middle of these two. And it is. And then three. So then you just do the same again only that you started at the different stitch. So this one's white. The white one is mohair and it tends to stick a bit. And white. One, two, three and white. And blue. And the last needle again here in the middle, a white one, one, two, three, and the last one is white. And then again three rows using only the blue. Now I have done three and this is it. Then you just keep going doing the same thing over and over. So now you start as if you were here. So the second one will be uh, white and then one, two, three blue and then white. So this bit you just keep going until again it's one meter long and then you cast off. After the blue one's done then we'll make the green one with the red designs in it. So here again I have done the beginning of it again just the same round on 20 stitches and now we are taking the red and the first row is very similar to what we were working with the blue and white yarns but now I first knit two green ones and then take the red so the patterning starts on the third stitch and then you keep going just like with the blue and white one so that you have three of the base color green here and then one red and again three green and one red till the end of the row. That's the one row done and then we need to make the middle bit of this that has three stitches in red. So the first one again is green. So we'll need the red one in red plus the two stitches on both sides of it. So three reds. And 
and then one green. It's a bit loose. So it looks like that. And then again three red. And one green. And like that to the end of the row. There. And then the third row is the same as the first one of this patterning. So you knit two in green and the middle red one stays red. I mean you put red on top of it. And then again three green one red So now we see the design it forms and so on to the end of the row. After the row is done you need two rows using only the green before we start the next little design. After the two green rows we are picking up the red again and again it will go in between the previous design things. So the first one will be red now as well as then that there. So. Uh, red and three green and then this one in between that will be red and like that to the end of the row three green and one red I'm now almost at the end of this row and just because of the way these little designs fit here I'm going to make one thing differently. Um, the very last stitch of this row, I'm going to do it already in red because otherwise um, these will be sort of higher. So uh, this one will be red. So instead of having three there at the very end, there's, you can see how it is on the last needle, green, green and red. And then again, now we'll have two because this was the middle one. So now I'm having two red, one green, three red, one green. And so on till the end of the row again. End of the row here. And since we did the last row differently we again need to do it slightly differently so uh, the last two are green and then I'm going on to the last last row which again is just one red and three green until the end and after that you do again two rows using only the green and then you start again from here. We started there where we had two stitches in green and then one red. And this is how you continue again so that it will be one meter long before you cast off. So here are the finished tubes. By now I have wet them right through and then let dry so that um, evens the stitches well. In other words blocked them. Then you need some wadding and something to stick it in with. I'm using a very large knitting needle on the other end of it. And then you just put the wadding in there and use whatever you have to push, push it towards the middle. So it's worth starting from both ends. That's the easiest way to do it. And uh, just keep going doing like that and then sort it out so it doesn't get too thick like I don't want it to go be sort of overfilled and sticking out like that all the three of them so here I have them filled up and then I'm going to plait them together first I set them nice to start like that and then pin them together 
and then just start plaiting them together, not too tight. I actually plaited it again a little bit tighter. And now that's plaited together and uh, then you join them and sew them. Just use these yarn ends to sew them together here. Some ends of the tubes can still easily be so that they're not properly attached plus there's still a needle pin. Uh, so. Uh, I took another yarn and sew this as well. So this will do. And I hide this end of the yarn there. There. Then we need to make the bow for it. I have been using um, the mohair or you could of course have anything, anything white together with glitter yarn. So I'm using the two yarns together and casting on 31 stitches so that I treat the two yarns as one. Like that. Thirty-one. So here's my thirty-one stitches. And again, I have divided them, so there's 10 each plus 1. And again, I knit the last and the first together. So, like that. And then you simply knit round again, just like the tubes, uh, until it's 18 centimeters long. Now it's 18 centimeters long and I need to cast off. I'm using only the golden thread for finishing. What you need to do next is to divide these evenly into two needles just. And you have 30 stitches, so uh, 15 on each. There. And then take just the glittery one and uh, finish off by knitting always two together. One from the front needle and one from the back. And then let them both out at the same time. And then another two and uh, knit them together. And then when you have two stitches, you cast them off by uh, the ordinary way casting off. So you pull the, la the back one over the front one, like that. And then again, the next two. And uh, finish it off. both of those two and pull that over. So that finishes it off. And then you just keep going to the end of the row like this. So now one end is closed and then I'm going to put some wadding into it so that sort of both sides of the bow will be a sort of bit fluffy, puffy. So it's just a little bit of it. that be enough for one end? Yes. And then the same on the other side. They are easy to move about after it's closed, but I'm just leave it, putting them in here now for trying to see what it looks like. Yes. And now <coughs> I'll um, close off the other end. If you prefer, you can just sew it using the same glittery thread, but I'm going to crochet it because it, then it gives sort of a similar 
um, look as the casting off. So, but if you don't know how to crochet, I'm not explaining it in here now. So I just start here and pull the yarn through and leave it inside there. So I don't need to need to um, weave it in separately. And then I'm just taking a stitch here and a stitch there. And this um, always get mixed up. One <laughs> Americans and British call this different. One calls it single crochet and the other calls it double crochet. But whatever it is, just you just pull through there and then like that. And uh, I keep going until the end. You also need a small piece in the middle to hold the bow together and hold the bow in with the rest. So this is um, just done the same way. 12 stitches round, 14 centimeters. And the reason this is also a tube is so that it's a bit heavier that way. That way it works better holding the bow together with the rest. Here's the knitted ribbon that will go with the bow. It is simply a long knitted piece. It's one one ribbing and I have used very large needles. These ones are um, eight millimeter but it doesn't matter if they're exactly that, something that's thick. That's what makes it this sort of a feel. So uh, you cast on using the glitter thread uh, you cast on 16 stitches. Here I have the 16 stitches and then I'm going to start ribbing one knit, one purl. It's always a bit harder to work when your yarn is thin and your needles are big. So the first few rows are hard but you simply knit one purl one and don't tighten them. The whole point of this is so that it stays sort of like net, um, so you don't tighten at all. Knit, purl, and so on until the end of the row first. That's the first row and then you turn and keep going. And also knit the first stitch. I mean some people like to lift the first one without, slip the first one without knitting it, but also knit that. Just like ordinary ribbing, it's hard to see at first because the stitches are so big. But this is how you keep going uh, until the piece is 30 centimeters long. Now we have everything we need for it and then we just have to put it together. I put that ribbon in there now and then I set it nicer afterwards. and. Uh, then you just take this here piece, go right round and uh, tighten it and sew it there. At this stage you could also make a loop for hanging using this same yarn. I'm not going to do that, but you could if you wanted to. There. And then I'll just set it nice. This so it will hang whatever way you want it to hang from there. And this here nicely. There. And then you need something to hang it with. So you could make a loop or um, you could use a curtain ring or whatever. But I'm actually using a different way. Simply because this is quite heavy. This always stretches. It's quite heavy and what, I'm, what I am actually going to do, I'm using one of these knitting needles that I don't use anymore sort of a grey metal 
and I'm sticking it just in here. Also, because it's heavy, then this gives it sort of a bit more body. Sticking it through there and leaving it out where the nail is on my wall or door, wherever you're going to put it. So I just stuck that in there and then it will hang from this here. And there we are done. Merry Christmas! <laughs>